year because of budget cuts. The Obama administration is paying at least $10 billion to resettle this new wave of so-called immigration. Why are we, the American citizens, putting up with this insanity? And I've been telling you about this for weeks, for months. Every time budget cuts get tight, they talk about cutting Social Security for the seniors, cutting medical care for the seniors, cutting salaries for the armed forces. Meanwhile, he sets money aside to give to the Muslim Brotherhood, to Al-Qaeda, to import and resettle these terrorists. Now, mind you, and I say this every single week, not every Muslim is a terrorist. We know this. You know it. I know it. But every single Muslim is the follower of the goat-raping pedophile named Mohammed. Every single one of them. And I am not bashing. I am not insulting Islam. I am merely explaining it. These are facts. Mohammed did have sex with goats. It is documented. It is in the Quran. They are told it's okay to have sex with goats. Muslims are told, however, don't sell that goat in your village. You can sell it the next village over. It is also a fact that Mohammed had sex with children. He married Aliyah when she was six years old. There is no age limit on marrying young girls in Islam. Islamic leaders have said so in recent weeks in the media. You can marry an is a Muslim girl in the cradle. The only guideline is you cannot have sex with her until her body can withstand your weight and that's not science you just have to pretty well guess that it will and these children do die from their first sexual experience because they're being raped at five and six and seven and eight years old and they die from severe internal injuries and Obama is bringing these people unfettered into the United States we have millions of illegal immigrants being fast-tracked for citizenship by an immigration that believes a large number of citizens are extremists. American citizens are extremists. People like me. People that don't like an uncontrolled government. That don't like overtaxation. That don't like an administration that doesn't follow the Constitution. We're considered extremists. But these baby raping pedophiles are allowed to come in the country and be fast tracked for citizenship. Returning American veterans are put on terrorist watch lists. Department of Homeland Security has issued warnings. Keep an eye on these people. The returning veterans may have an anti government attitude. But let's bring in these Muslims. They've only stated in their own words that we want to kill all non-believers. Now I don't care if Obama is a Muslim or not. He's kowtowing to the Muslims in every way, shape, and form. He has brought Muslim Brotherhood informants and advisors into his administration. They're telling him what he can say in his Homeland Security, his FBI, his CIA training manuals. We're not allowed to teach our investigators now that Islamic extremism is a thing because it might offend Muslims. Yeah, the people that are trying to kill us. We don't want to offend them. He brings them in unfettered and targets us. This veterans pack believes that based on intelligence reports, some of these Muslim immigrants have, may have already made it overseas and fought for ISIS. Many of them are 
Somali refugees up in Minnesota. And they were fast-tracked and received U.S. citizenship. And they've joined ISIS. And when they return, they will be much better prepared to carry on the fight against the enemy here in the homeland. And that enemy is you. It's me. It's every American. It's everybody that pisses on a Quran. That knows that Islam is a satanic creed. There is nothing in the Quran that is compatible with the United States Constitution. The law of the Quran is Sharia. Sharia is all about domination, subjugation, control. Sharia tells you what you can wear. And I kid you not, I watched a video of a 60-ish year old woman on the streets in what appeared to be Afghanistan. She was being berated by a man about her age. She was wearing Muslim garb, but she had a red jacket on, a red western style jacket. He berated her for about three minutes. He had her get on her knees. He berated her for another three or four minutes. And he put a gun to her head and he shot her for wearing a red jacket. Other groups seeking refuge in the United States come from Somalia, such as Al Shabib, Egypt, the Muslim Brotherhood, Gaza and the West Bank, which has Hamas, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, from Libya and other nations. Obama is importing these terrorists. Now we know that every one of them that comes across is not likely to be a terrorist. They say only about 20% of them are likely to be activated and be violent. But he's talking about 70,000 in the next year. That's 14,000 terrorists that Obama is trying to bring into this country. And maybe more considering where these people are coming from. The numbers could be much, much higher. Because these people are coming from areas where we have fought, where we have bombed, and they're likely to have lost family. So now he's giving them free passage to come here. And here in the homeland, municipalities continue to bow down and kiss the ass of Islam. In New Jersey, the police department forces the staff to spend four days learning about Muslims in Islamic culture. I don't suppose any of these sessions focused on Islamic jihad, beheadings, misogyny, Jew hatred, forced child marriage and rape, female genital, genital mutilation, or sex slavery, which are all practiced by Muslims around the world. And yes, around the world, female generation, uh, generation, female genital mutilation is happening in the UK. It is happening here in America. This has been proven. As the website Creeping Sharia so aptly puts it, this type of event isn't necessary for Christians, Jews, Hindus, or Buddhists, or any other religion. Why? Because only the members of one religion are rapidly transforming U.S. towns and cities and committing acts of horrific violence in almost every country in the world. Muslims in the U.S. fully leverage their jihad waging co-regionalists to scare and subjugate non-Muslims. Muslims are the only ones who refuse to assimilate and force Western nations to accommodate their Sharia practices. In New Jersey, close to 100 township workers and emergency responders attended a symposium hosted at the West Windsor Police Department, by the West Windsor Police Department. It was focused on learning about Islam and Muslim culture. The four-day event took place last month at the, Pri the Princeton Junction Fire Department and featured daily speakers from the Institute of Islamic Studies in East Windsor. And it covered 
such aspects as the Islamic religion, cultural practices, sensitivities of the Muslim community. Speakers shared insights into traditional Muslim dress, religious holidays, and the meaning of Muslim prayers. They talked about police community relationships and about the need to be respectful of Muslim obligations such as the wearing of the hijab, that bag the Muslims put over their women's heads. This is a shame that people in America are being forced to attend this sort of indoctrination. Can you imagine the outrage? Can you imagine the outrage if this police department had hosted a come spend four days and learn about Christianity before the ink has even dried on those flyers? Lawsuits would be filed. The Muslims would have care suing the town. Care being the Council on American Islamic Relations. It's a Muslim Brotherhood front group. A hate group. They stir up trouble wherever they can find it. We've covered stories every couple of weeks over the past months where the Muslims in a given community will try to put up a mosque and the community turns them down. In several communities, the rules say no house of worship will be on residential streets. They'll all be on main thoroughfares. That goes for all churches. One town, I believe this was in New Jersey. I might be wrong. It may have been in New Hampshire. The Muslims were offended by it. Why? It's the same rule that applies to Catholics and Baptists. But they called CARE, the Council of American Islamic Relations. CARE got on the phone to their... their troll their little bitch in the Obama administration. They got hold of the Justice Department and Eric Holder. The Department of Justice sued this small town with federal funds, your tax dollars, suing a small American town with lawsuits bigger than the town can afford to take on. That's what they do. They bully you right into bankruptcy. The town had to cave in. The mosque had to be built outside of town a little ways, but the town had to pay these Muslims $5 million plus buy a $2 million piece of property for them to have their church on. That's how they do this. They intimidate. They call in Obama's flunkies. They get the government to do the dirty work. American judicial system working against the American people in favor of the Muslims. Time after time after time. There was a story just a couple of weeks ago of a Muslim that came in to get a job at Abercrombie and Fitch, a very stylish clothing outfit. She wore her hijab covering her face with the long robes. Nothing stylish about it. She was turned down for the job. It doesn't show off their clothes. It doesn't attract the people that they want to sell to. They have a right to decide who they want in their stores. Much like a strip club or a bar or a restaurant has a right to pick the waitresses or dancers that they want. You can't force Hooters to have 300 pound waitresses. It's always been the case that a business have a right to define the look they want for their company. But now the Muslims go apply for something they know they will not get. They get turned down as they know they will. They call the Muslim attorneys at care and CARE called the Department of Justice, who sued Abercrombie and Frit Fitch. The girl didn't get the job, but she got about $80,000, more than she'd make in two years of work. So now she doesn't have to work. 
She collects her wealth.